What's up, everybody? My name is Lehua, and welcome to the Superfina channel. I am a variety content creator, host of podcasts across worlds, and I stream on twitch.tv slash Lehua Superfina. Today, we are going to talk about five titles that I've been reading recently. The first we're going to talk about is I'll Be the Matriarch in This Life. The synopsis for this is Florentia was reincarnated as an illegitimate child of the richest family in the empire. She had thought that everything would go well in the future, but her father had passed away. Her relatives left her at the doorsteps, and the honorable family she was so proud of was completely ruined. But is this real? She drank a little, all right, a lot, and was hit by a carriage. When she opened her eyes again, she was seven years old. Moreover, the second prince, who was the enemy of her family in her previous life, is following her around like a dog. All right, both the second prince and the family are mine. In this life, I'll have to become the overlord. So this story of Florentia, nicknamed Tia, who will be the matriarch in this life. She knows what led her family to ruin, which was the leadership of her cousins. It was horrible. And so Florentia is saying, well, I'll be the overlord. I'll be in charge of the family that we were not ruined. Because one, she's really smart. And two, in her past life, she was actually the one that did the operations while her cousins did nothing. So she really knows the ins and outs of being an overlord. And in this story, it's interesting because one, she's an illegitimate child. And two, she's a female. And this is like kind of like a patriarch world. So she really had to fight for her position and such. And then another thing that led to the ruin of her family was something related to the royal family. So that's where the second prince comes in. She actually befriends him to try and make him more successful in the royal family because he is also like an illegitimate child. And he's actually an exceptional person. So him, you know, being added to this lifetime of Tia's is very beneficial for her and the empire. Second title is I Became the Male Lead's Female Friend. Synopsis is she becomes interrupted by love, a jealousy inducer, and the female friend of the male lead. And in addition, she even has an unrequired love with the male lead. It was ruined. As long as this is the case, let's just become friends. It was nice to have the first meeting with such a young male lead. Hello, Bowser, young A. Polite way for our noble's daughter. What? You were mistaking for a girl and you cried? Fortunately, she managed to resolve the misunderstanding and become close friends. However, the male lead in his childhood is more shy and soft-hearted than I thought. Eventually, she became attached to the male lead and decided to become a real friend. However, due to the disturbance of the male lead father and the war broke out, we had to be separated for a long time. I thought I could barely meet him again and stay the same as before, but... Your eyes must have dropped a lot since I didn't see you, Princess Avering. What's wrong with him again? It's not just that. Rather than getting along, he keeps get into trouble when he has a chance and most of all even bothers my love business aren't we just friends she was kind of like a side villain and one of the flaws that led her to her ruin was falling in love with the male lead so what the synopsis is saying is in this lifetime she's going to be friends with him because the thing is she can't avoid him the reason why she fell in love with him in the first place is because they were always interacting they're moms are friends <laughs> so there's no way they weren't going to see each other so instead of falling in love she's going to be friends with him like best friends and you know you will always be fine with your friends right so it leads to that and at the moment she is meeting the male lead as a kid and he's totally different from how he is as a doll so this girl she was kind of transmigrated in the first place yeah so in the book they describe the male lead as like super handsome but apparently as a kid he was super pretty pretty enough to be mistaken as a girl and he has like a he has like family trauma where his father's very strict and abusive and that has 
kind of scarred him mentally, emotionally, maturely too. So there's this point where our female protagonist is trying to help him heal and mature. And it seems like they, I haven't got to this part in the manga, it seems like they'll be separated. And then, you know, she sees the male Lee as pretty. They're going to be separated. He comes back as a man and he's going to be very handsome. And because he already has an attachment to her being friends, he's going to be attached to her as older adults, you know? And I think that's where the whole uh, disrupts her love business comes into play. So this is going to be really funny. Right now, it's kind of kind of funny, but kind of like slice of life, kind of drama. I'm really excited to read the chapters where there are adults and there will be a lot more comedy. Third title I've been reading is The Heroine Wants Me as Her Sister-in-Law. Synopsis is, this is the world of a rated 19 novel based on Little Red Riding Hood, this time with a princess who eats the wolf. The problem is that wolf is my younger brother. I hid deep in the forest so that Red Riding Hood wouldn't find us. The goal is to escape to the human world safely. And then one day, I found a child collapsed in the snow-covered forest and can't just pass by a sick child. I brought her home thinking I could treat her. Of all people, she was the female lead and said, I don't remember anything. To make matters worse, she lost her memory in an accident? I like you the best in the world. I was afraid of death, but couldn't drive the sick child away coldly. So I took good care of her. And don't forget your gratitude, even if you get your memory back later. But this kid... What's your ideal type? I like tall, broad-shouldered men. A handsome man? How handsome? I think you have a lot of questions about me. It's my fault that your eyes shine when I talk about my ideal type, right? So in this story, the female protagonist is actually a side character of this rated 19 novel that she read in her previous life. So she's actually a side character that died. And the way this story was set is there was a fire and she died, but her younger brother survived. And that's where Red Riding Hood came in and took him back home. And, you know, there's all the R-rated 19 scenarios afterwards. And so in this story with our female protagonist, she does not want to die. And she's thinking, okay, if we're not around the dragons that cause the fire, we're not going to be around the fire. And so she changes kind of their life and moves deep, deep in the forest where no one goes. And they just don't interact with anyone. They keep a low profile and they're trying to save up money so they can move to the human world. And uh, our female protagonist is trying to save up money so they live in a very protective area like a castle. And so later on when she does find the novels, female lead, Red Riding Hood, takes care of her. The little girl's like, oh, she's saving money for a castle? She likes handsome men? And it turns out that Red Riding Hood didn't, like, I think she didn't lose her memories or she got her memories back and she's trying to bring in our female protagonist. And instead of being obsessed with the little brother, now she's obsessed with the sister who dies in the novel but now is alive so it's like oh maybe it's a hereditary thing maybe this red riding hood is just obsessed with this family <laughs> next title i've been reading is my husband is my choice she died three times at the hands of the emperor then her fourth life began all i had left was evil and vengeance i can't take it anymore now it's my turn to get revenge on those who have wronged me However, the person whom I will be marrying is not his highness, the second prince. The surroundings became quiet as if I had poured cold water on them with my words. The nobles looked at each other in bewilderment, and the face of the second prince was brutally twisted. The faces of the crown prince and empress, as well as other princes and queens, were clearly embarrassed. A situation in which everyone is watching me, holding back their breath. Then whom? on earth is it? 
When asked by the emperor, I smiled brightly and pointed to the boy at the end of the prince's robe. This is the man who I am going to marry. This story with the female protagonist, three times she died, she says, and each time she regressed. And over these many lifetimes that she's been through, she's learned that she cannot marry into the royal family. She needs to be at a higher power than some royal members. And she needs to have power. She needs to show that she can be a leader. Because for some reason in this story, the emperor wants to take over her title and her land. There's just something about their territory. Whatever her dukedom has, the emperor wants it. And then he tries to use his sons, and that's why she said the emperor killed me. And then the other time was like one of the princes that killed her. So, anyways, there is a pattern here. The royal family, the emperor, their family is out to get her. So she tried to lay low. That didn't work out. They're like, mm -mm -mm. no, we need you out. So now she has to show that she has power, she has support, and she's not to be messed with. But she also has to find a way where she's like on equal ground with the empire. So she has to marry into the royal family still. But she needs someone that she needs to control. So it's really interesting how she slowly reveals all of her skills and abilities. And kind of showing why she was hiding them in her previous life. And right now, she, they're showcasing her kind of bringing out her full potential and what she can do. And I'm liking this. And the next title I've been reading recently is I Only Came to Find My Dad. Synopsis is, despite her lack of father, Louise lived happily with her mother. Then one day, with her mother's death, her happy life came to an end. As her self-proclaimed guardian, her uncle Benjamin, a scumbag who coveted her mother, took her in as his niece. The only rebellious thing that the little Louise could do whilst in her uncle's grasp was kill herself. But for some reason, Louise returned to the year her mother died. The joy of meeting her mother again wasn't able to prevent her death from repeating, so she left to find her father. Her mother's words, Dad is alive, were the only clue she had, and that would eventually change her fate in this life. I escaped from Benjamin and barely made it to my dad's house. But he wasn't the only one there. So this synopsis kind of glazes over of what happened. When I was reading this story, I was quite surprised that Louise didn't just up and left to see her mother. She actually had a struggle for it. For one, her uncle Benjamin was putting her on surveillance. So she had to find a way to escape. Then she had to find a trusted adult to help her escape because if for some reason uncle Men benjamin well i know the reason you'll find out the reason uncle benjamin benjamin the scumbag spread this rumor and made the whole village mad at her mother and inadvertently hate her so all the adults did not like her she couldn't trust any of them because any of them could report back to benjamin and ruin her plan to escape so there is that journey for her and then on the way to see her father and then meeting her father and then find out why her father couldn't find her because he was in love with the mother and such and the story just builds and builds and it's great and we still have that sense of justice when benjamin the scumbag gets brought down and it's not a quick one it was a slow very satisfying justice and then after that it's not done now louise is she now lives in this aristotic world and she's learning things interacting with others she's learning politics and she's finding love it's like oh love it and those are the five titles that i have been reading recently what do you think about those stories have you read them already and if you have 
let us know your thoughts on them too. I think a lot of people will want to know more feedback about these titles that I mentioned. And if there are any that any of you would recommend, please let me know in the comments below. I'm sure others want to have some recommendations too. If you guys want to hear more stuff about anime and manga, I do host podcasts across worlds where we talk about that and other things we're interested in. And if you guys want to hang out, I do stream sometimes on twitch.tv slash Superfina. You're more than free to stop by, have a chat and such. Other than that, my name is Lehua and this is the Superfina channel talking about five titles that we've been reading recently. Hope you guys like this video and we'll see you on the next one. Laters!